And so uh, because you're all in webinar, no one's going to know that you're on here. You can ask, if you would, I'm going to bring up the chat box. Let me repeat this. I'm going to bring up the chat box. And you can ask, let me set the chat up so attendees can chat with everyone. So don't go off and have a brown squirrel conversation with each other, but you can all use the chat now. And if you have any questions, please use the chat, not the Q&A, uh, use the chat to ask any question and I will, or Karen will jump in and help and answer uh, any question that comes up. And so I have a 623 slide slide deck that we're going to go through. But after I get through these this conversation from the slide deck, then we'll go into LinkedIn and we'll spend time in LinkedIn and show you what we're talking about. Karen, you should see my full slide now, correct? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> so we're, we're recording and let's get started. I use the term professional LinkedIn profile to mean a profile that you deliberately spent time to build and you're building it very purposefully. Let's talk about what that all that means. So a little bit about me, high level. I'm a LinkedIn sales navigator, strategist, trainer, and coach. I've been doing it forever. My job is to play with LinkedIn and figure out things about it that you haven't discovered or don't have time to discover. So I can then teach you how to do it. You can find me on the internet, all over the internet. It's TL Burris, double R, double S. I have a YouTube channel focused to LinkedIn. I answer questions on Quora about LinkedIn. I have a blog and I have a pretty active LinkedIn presence. And I've got pollen all over me in North Carolina and I'm fighting that, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be able to hang in and serve you. Look, this is what we're going to discover in this conversation. Who should have a professional LinkedIn profile? We're going to talk a little bit about navigating your LinkedIn profile. The importance of clarity of who is your target audience. We're going to talk about the purpose of and the value of using the right keywords and phrases throughout your LinkedIn profile. Then we'll dig a little deeper into building your profile and using all of the appropriate areas of a LinkedIn profile. It's, it, there is rich in uh, different areas that you can get benefit from. Talk about how to manage it, maybe when to manage it. Uh, and if you would like, here's a, here's a suggestion. Let me copy this link. If you would like, go to this link that I just dropped in chat, and you can fill out a... a if you would like, you could fill out a Google form and you'll be able to collect, and you don't have to fill out the form if you don't want to, but it'll guide you on getting what's called your LinkedIn KPIs. And, the, and we'll talk a little bit about that before I get started. But your LinkedIn KPIs, what they basically are is, let me go show you. This is where that form is going to take you. Uh, it's going to take you to this page right here, and you'll be able to see the four components of your what's called your social selling index. And, and if you hover over or click on the question mark, it'll tell you what each one of these are all about. But bottom line, this is LinkedIn's one of LinkedIn's tools to measure, are you using LinkedIn correctly? Is your profile built correctly? Are you connecting with the right people? Are you sharing the right content? And are you building relationships and broadly and deeply all around your target audience? It's a really interesting way of looking at how you're using LinkedIn. And these are four numbers that I use. Again, look at the form. You do not need to fill it out if you don't want to. But look at it and look at, because there's four other numbers, three other numbers that you want to pay attention to. And those three other numbers are how often are people looking at your LinkedIn profile? How often are you showing up in LinkedIn search? And the seventh metric is how, how many LinkedIn connections do you have? And I'll offer how real are those connections? 
Those are seven really important, what are called KPI, key performance indicators that measure, are you using LinkedIn the best you can? And don't beat yourself up if this number is way lower and don't compare yourself to others. I don't care about these numbers up here. I only care about how well am I doing today and how well am I doing tomorrow? So just some ideas about the, the, the KPIs and, and the benefit of understanding those. So again, use the chat if you have a question. Who's this class for? Who's this conversation for? It's really, I drive it down to this. It's for anybody who wants to use LinkedIn intentionally. Anybody who wants to use LinkedIn, they want their profile to stand out. That's who it's for. Predominantly, the people who come to my classes, business developers, sales execs, account execs, uh, you know, uh, sales develop, uh, sales development reps, college graduates, people in career transition, owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. Again, anybody who wants to be found because they've discovered that LinkedIn is could be a useful tool for them, and they want to make sure they start off on the right foot. First of all, let's make sure we're all clear about this. What is LinkedIn? It is the world's biggest networking site out there, the world's biggest professional networking site. Uh, today, and I did this as of yesterday, 891 million people. We are probably um, six months at most, maybe less, from hitting a billion LinkedIn members. And I can guarantee you that for the next three or four or five months, LinkedIn is preparing that party when they hit a billion LinkedIn members. It's, it's, it's the, again, the biggest professional. Yeah, Facebook's got more people. That's fine. You know what? But they're not using LinkedIn as a business tool. They're on their plan like I play. There's almost 62 million companies represented on LinkedIn. And a great way to find the companies and then find the people. Activity on LinkedIn continues to grow. The more people who are serious about using LinkedIn, get on there and get into conversations and you can be a part of these conversations. It is an important business tool where you can build your presence, build your network, and then build your brand or your reputation through your words. <clears throat> so let's talk about what is a professional LinkedIn profile. Again, I'll repeat, it's a profile that you very purposely wrote focused on telling a specific group of people known as your target audience, telling them who you are and what you do by using words that resonate with them. Listen to that last statement. That's critical. You're using words in your LinkedIn profile that resonates with them. You're going to make sure you write it with good grammar and no spelling mistakes. You don't want to show up in my what's called my Manger, M-A-N-G-E-R report, or my pubic relations report. Listen to the words and you'll understand why. You don't want to make those mistakes. A LinkedIn profile is one that you manage on a regular basis. And as your role changes, as you discover more about how you should be presenting yourself, as your career changes, as your audience changes, you adjust your LinkedIn profile accordingly. A LinkedIn profile is one that you should be proud of because it can, if you build it right, it can show up in Google searches as well as LinkedIn searches for the keywords and phrases that, again, are important to your target audience. My LinkedIn profile, up until Google made a change in the way it does indexing, the way it shows data, my LinkedIn profile traditionally for about three or four years was on the first page right below the ads. Today, it's on the second page near the top, uh, but that's because Google's made a change and I've got to figure out a way to accommodate that change and adjust my profile accordingly so I show up. A LinkedIn profile uses all of the relevant sections that you can use. A professional LinkedIn profile uses all the relevant areas that make sense to use, telling your target audience who you are and what you do. Look, 
Oh, I didn't change that number, 891. Who should have a professional LinkedIn profile? Again, I talked about the people, business professionals, business owners, business developers, people in career transition, recruiters who want to show up for more candidates. Again, anybody who wants to show up uh, on an important professional networking site so that they can be found and discovered. Uh, I, I think that there are very few examples of why someone would not want a LinkedIn profile. Uh, I've worked with politicians. I've worked with bail bondsmen. I've worked with divorce attorneys. Um, um, I've, 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 I've sat on a panel with the FBI and the NSA, and uh, there were a few examples in, the, in some of those ideas there that having a LinkedIn profile wasn't appropriate, but only a few. Any questions, drop it in chat and I'll, I'll pay attention and, and answer any question you throw at me. All right, this is the most important step. You need to write your LinkedIn profile focused to the right people. Be clear about who you're writing it for. You need to figure out who this person is. Now, in a B2B space, business to business, you need to think about what's their role, what kind of company they're in, maybe what industry they're in, maybe what geography or region they're in, uh, so that you can really focus your LinkedIn profile on the right human. In a business consumer space, it may be, you know, what are those, what are their interests? Maybe, maybe you're going to think about the, you know, their personal demographic information or their lifestyle. But you really want to be clear, just as we are supposed to be clear in marketing, who are we presenting our, our LinkedIn profile to? Um, it, the more clear you are, the more worthwhile your LinkedIn profile is going to be. Uh, and if you don't understand this, I really would encourage you to go to your, go to your uh, marketing professional if you work in a department. Uh, or do some more research and uh, or just message me and ask me and I'll be glad to help you figure that out because if you if you don't figure this out, you may start down the wrong journey. Here's the next big thing that's absolutely critical about building a professional LinkedIn profile. You need to make sure you're using the words and phrases that your target audience uses when they're talking about you. <clears throat> you need to you don't want to use words and phrases that you hope that they are using. You want to use words and phrases that you know they are using. So do some research. You know, ask your target audience what are the words and phrases they use. You maybe you want to use Google Trends and do some analysis. When I uh, years ago, a few years ago, uh, probably four or five years ago now, I um, I started out referring to myself as a LinkedIn trainer, and I still call myself a LinkedIn trainer, but that was the primary phrase that I use, LinkedIn trainer. And then I went playing on Google Trends, and I discovered that tr LinkedIn training is far more important than LinkedIn trainer. So I started adjusting my messaging, adjusting my LinkedIn profile, and started using the phrase LinkedIn training more than LinkedIn trainer. And it made a difference. It moved my ranking up in LinkedIn and Google searches. You want to build this list and you want to play with it. You want to prioritize it and you want to understand it before you start using it uh, in your LinkedIn profile or in your, again, or maybe websites, blog posts, et cetera, et cetera. Using the words that resonate your target audience is far more important. <clears throat> and by the way, I often ask this, if someone new calls me or emails me or LinkedIn messages me or whatever, I will often ask them, would you please tell me two things? How did you find me? And if you did a search, what were the words that you used? Because that's important to me. But what better way to figure out what words to use then use the words people are using to find you. Any questions, use the chat box. I'm happy to answer. When you build your LinkedIn profile, build it in your language. And what I mean by that is don't follow somebody else's style. You need to use the words and the tone and the level of, of uh, you know, personal personality that you feel comfortable with. 
I'm not a big corporate, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, subscribe or adopt uh, corporate philosophy guys. That's not me. I'm Teddy. I'm pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, and I use very uh, friendly words throughout my entire LinkedIn profile. I don't use, again, I don't uh, conform to society a lot because that's not who I am. I'm no longer a suit and tie guy, so I'm not going to pretend. And the same thing when I write my words. Now, I use appropriate words. I don't. Uh, I never would use inappropriate words. <clears throat> and, I, and I may include a sense of humor in, in my words as well, where relevant and appropriate. And so, but write your LinkedIn profile to be you. Don't pretend to be someone else. Don't, don't be a fake. What is it? Uh, there's a quote. Uh, Dr. Seuss said, you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. So celebrate who you are, as long as who you are is appropriate to celebrate publicly. And I'm sure that is the case. Here's some best practices. Uh, 10 very straightforward best practices that I encourage you to use. Number one, everybody needs a profile picture. It shows that you are approachable. Number two, you need a headline that tells your target audience what you do for them, not your HR assigned title at XYZ company. That's so, you know, passe. Tell me what you do. You get 220 characters there. You need to make sure that your contact information is up to date and that it works. Look at your LinkedIn con uh, profile, click on contact info, make sure that you've customized your profile, you've added the right websites and the website URLs work, you've added your phone number and you call that phone number, make sure it rings. You uh, check your email address, and put your professional email address in there. The, you are more likely to be successful in life the more accessible you are. So make sure your contact information is right. Tell relevant stories in your about section. Two sentence, three sentence stories about something that's important to your target audience. Don't just use bullet points and don't spend a lot of time vetting yourself by saying, you know, I'm trained, experienced, and, you know, I've been doing this for 25 years and I've got certifications up the yin and out the yang. Nobody cares about that. What they care about is what have you done to create value that is relevant to them? Use the featured section. I'll show this stuff to you in a few minutes. Use the featured section to showcase even more content that amplifies your brand. Same thing with your experience section. Talk about what you did in the past that's relevant to what you do today. Talk about what you did in the past that helped you grow to be who you are today. And tell those little micro stories and use the skills section. And if you're relying on the uh, Microsoft Office, Outlook, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, don't put those in there. Those are like using, a, for most of us, that's like using a number two pencil. If you don't know how to use that stuff, then you probably aren't really a business professional. And I'm being very blunt about that, but I'm also realistic enough to know that there are roles where those are critical steps. So you're not only Word, et cetera, PowerPoint, et cetera, et cetera, but you are, are, are a master at those. So if you list them in your LinkedIn skills section, you're talking about them in your about section. You're talking about them in your experience section. Everything you put on your LinkedIn profile needs to be relevant and or showing professional growth to who you are today. If you have something on your LinkedIn profile that sends me down a rabbit hole, you just distracted your most, potentially your most important viewer from knowing who you are and deciding that you are someone they want to talk with. Irrelevant content does not belong there. Again, no rabbit hole. And did I say that it's important to check your spelling and your grammar? This is critical. I know business owners who put their website on there and they spelled it wrong. I know business owners who had their previous company, presidents of company who had their previous email address still on their LinkedIn profile. Don't make that mistake. Make sure your profile's up to date. Any questions, please drop them in chat and I'm glad to help happy to answer them.
<laughs> and you need to pay attention, review it on a regular basis, review what you're saying. I'm telling you, I've been doing this for a long time. And even to even to today, this morning, I found a stupid typo in my LinkedIn profile. I was embarrassed. Fortunately, I found it before someone else did, or maybe they did. But update and uh, review it regularly. All right, some primary sections of your LinkedIn profile that you need to consider. The top card, we're going to go look at that. You need that's the the whole the whole top box. Your contact information, we've already talked about that. You need to make sure that your business email address and phone number are in there. If you're a creator, and unless you really are creating content every every day, I would probably not want to consider you a creator. You want to use the featured section to, to share more content. Your, your about section is 2,600 characters. That's a daggone book, nearly. Your experience section, your title field's 100 characters. The description box on each experience is 2,000 characters. Your education, go back as far as it's relevant to who you are today, but you don't need high school. You definitely don't need middle school. And my wife gets upset because she's a preschool teacher. I say, you don't need your preschool. Higher ed only is for most of us. License and certifications, really important areas where you can showcase the relevant license and the relevant certifications that you've gotten relevant to who you are and what you do. Volunteering, if you're a part of your community, actively involved in some publicly uh, 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 public area volunteering, put that on it. I, I, I'm, I'm cautious with these words. And I'm cautious with this next statement, but I'm, I've got to say this. Uh, stay between the mustard and the mayonnaise. And what I mean by that is this. If you're a member of some uh, right-wing or left-wing political group, if you're a member of some group that doesn't want people to know you are out there until you create chaos, don't put that on your LinkedIn profile. It doesn't belong there. This is a public document. Um, you want to make sure that you show people that you care about your communities and you're serving your communities in a very open, transparent way. Your skills section, you have 50 skills. So think about what are all these skill words. Remember, it's not Microsoft Office, Excel, and PowerPoint. Recommendations. Do you know that recommendations are indexed? So ask for LinkedIn recommendations on a regular basis and, and make sure you ask for them in a very deliberate way. And then publications. These are another area. If you've got, you know, podcasts and YouTube videos and news, uh, uh, you know, TV, TV interviews and uh, newspaper interviews and magazine and, and where you, you are can be discovered as the authority that you are, they're great. That's great content to put under publications. Courses that you're taking where you're growing, organizations where you are and serving. And there are others that may be a benefit to you, but those are the top. 13 that are important. All right. This is where I need audience participation. Let me repeat this. I need audience participation at this point because I want to go in LinkedIn and I want to answer questions. So I, I, I could continue on with, you know, sharing, but the best way I can help you at this point is you've got to ask questions. So use the chat box and ask me any question so that I can help you by showing it to you. And if you drop in here and I see your name, um, then if you would like me to bring your profile up and you can ask me a question via chat and I'll bring your profile up and I'll answer the question. This is critical because I want to make this all about you. Have you had any issues with bots or fake profiles? Oh, Karen. Celeste met, missed the conversation that you and I had earlier. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, Celeste, every day, every freaking day, I have to delete a, uh, a, a fake bot. And I'll tell you what I'm doing, just because so, I think it's important for me to share this. Uh, that's not where I wanted to go. I, I went to this right here. I grabbed the wrong URL. I thought I copied this. Uh, Carla dropped her LinkedIn profile. Oh, I don't think it lets me copy. Yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Celeste, 
if you get an invite and Car and Carla, please don't be hating on me. I'm going to use you as an example, even though I know you're not a bot, Carla. Okay. If you get an invite from a bot, a fake, uh, I could show you what they look like. They're, it's going to look like this right here. Here's what I think is a general. Oh, what happened to her? That's not her. Where was the one I deleted? Now, that can't be her. Um, here, Brandy. Oh, my God, Karen, I copied that profile, but that's not it. So I get these invites, and I thought I copied her LinkedIn profile URL. Yeah, oh, I didn't. Here it is right here. I didn't block her yet. Uh, so I think this is a fake because of the words and all this stuff. And I engage them and see their fake. Now, here's what I want you all to subscribe to. If you think this is a fake, if you think, not know, think, click on more, click on report block. And then you got to click on report content profile fake. And then you hit submit. I haven't done this yet because I'm not done evaluating this one because I want to, I'm trying to find out what their end game is. I think I believe I know what they are, but report it as a fake, submit it. And then, then you can block them. And I'm not going to block them myself, but I would encourage you to block them. So Celeste, when you get these, report and block, report and block, report and block all day long, please. Okay. Uh, Carla, drop me a question. Uh, about your profile, and I'll answer the question for you. Pamela asks, would you please pull up my profile and offer input on ways to improve it? So Pamela Knighton, go here, duplicate, and Pamela Knighton, P-A-M-E-L-A-K-N-I-G-H-T-E-N, and Pamela uh, I bet you this is you in, in Louisiana. So, <clears throat> so high level, Pamela, thank you for having an image. Thank you for having a profile picture with a smile on your face. Uh, thank you for telling me more about what you do. Be careful of the uppercase letters. You don't need to yell at me. Um, you know, you can, you can talk all in the same language. You don't have a company page, it appears, or you're not connected to the company page. You don't need, Pamela, I'm going fast and furious, but this is being recorded. You don't need to tell me your name you know, and your professional trainer. You don't need to tell me that. Offering service to private company. Tell me what you do. Tell me how you help uh, businesses, private corporations, government agencies. Tell me how you create value, how you solve problems. That's what you want to tell me here. And I'm okay with the bullet point list of things that you do. But really, tell me what you do. That's probably the most important thing that most people miss out on. They spend time validating themselves, and they don't spend time, especially, listen to these words, in the first four lines. The first four lines. One, two, three, four. Because that's all I see by default. And if you don't get my attention in these first four lines, I'm not going to click on see more. Tell me what you do. Tell me how you create value. Tell me how you solve problems relevant to me. And the me is your target audience. I hope that makes sense, Pamela. Let me keep going a little bit more. Um, Max, I offer professional management development training. So I, uh, I'd like to target HR. Um, yeah, t tell me what you do. So let's go back to Carla. Carla, you may have a LinkedIn profile picture, but you're hiding it from people you're not connected with. So you don't want to hide your profile picture. So go look at your uh, public profile. You get to that through contact information. You click on the pencil and you'll see a, a hyperlink to go to your uh, public profile. Show your picture to everybody. It looks like you have a smile on your face and this is you. So you should have your profile picture. Uh, business consultant, business coach, executive virtual assistant, Tell me what you do. You don't need to tell me you work for Carla Marie. I already know that. It's right there. Tell me what you do as a business coach, consultant, executive, virtual assistant. Tell me what you do. Um, you, you're using creator mode. Uh, I would recommend that you not use creator mode. You only have three, uh, 271 connections. I would keep growing your connections. I know you're using creator mode because you have what's called talk about 
and you have the number of followers and then you have the follow button here, which means your connect button is hidden down here. You got a long way to go to build your network before I would encourage you to switch to creator. And I don't see, um, I don't see uh, newsletters. Let's go show all. Yeah, I don't see newsletters here. Uh, I don't see articles here. All I see is comments, videos, and reactions, images. So I would tell you not to, not to turn on creator yet. Turn that back off because you're not ready to be a creator. Uh, no disrespect, but I'm really trying to get you to really grow your network before you switch to being a creator. And a creator means you're creating new content every day. Um, let me see what I miss. Pamela, Carla, Peggy, take a look at mine. I haven't made my professional page yet. Peggy Moneta. Let me go find Peggy. Uh, LinkedIn.com. <clears throat> Peggy, M-O-N-E-T-T. P-E-G-G-Y-M-O-N-E-T-T-E. -E um, is that top one you? Uh, uh, JDMBA, Lafayette. Yep, she said, yep, she said to me. Uh, smile, good image. Um, you know, I, I love this. Grit, great, some gratitude. Uh, community government relations, legal communications, media manager, passionate about improvement of self and others. Uh, legal specialist. I don't know. I, I like that. I think that may distract from telling people what you do. Tell me what you do. And I don't know enough about you to know what that is. Community, legal, education, private attorney, improvement, court, me, error right there, court, nah, I don't know if you want to clean that up. Let, don't let that go naked there. Here's another big one for you, Peggy, if I may. You don't tell me anything what you've done for the year for two months here. I have no idea what you've done to create value. No idea. Six years uh, working as a senior uh, paralegal. I have no idea what you did. Did you just show up and sit in the corner? And I'm playing with you to make this point. Tell me what you did in your previous roles. Tell me what you did to create value, solve problems. Two years, two years, two years. I'm not worried about the two-year moving, moving on. What I'm really trying to get you to think about six years, almost seven years there, what did you do to create value? How did you learn? How did you grow as a senior paralegal, legal assistant, at, even up to today? What do you do to create value? Tell me more. That's, that's powerful. That's a huge missed opportunity where you can use the keywords and phrases that resonate with your target audience. Let me go look at Stacy here. Stacy dropped hers. Smile, banner, level five visionary. Okay, now we have to talk. Uh, I don't know what that means, Stacy. And I'm 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 don't know for sure. Does your target audience know what that means? Um, I don't know. Level five visionary. So think more about, you know, in the company geeked. Is it your company or are you working for somebody else? Uh, in this company, what do you do to create value? What do you do to solve? How do you serve your client? Um, tell me more about that. I'm fine with you telling me in another story that you're a level five visionary. And that means that you look at life, look at business differently. But uh, again, all of this, these are all vetting statements, Stacey. And I love it. I just don't think that they belong. And listen to these words, everybody. They don't belong in the number one most important field on your LinkedIn profile. They belong somewhere else. In that field, you need to be very clear about telling your target audience what you do for them. And that may change as your role changes, but that's okay. You know, be very deliberate about that. Um, and and Stacy, uh, you're writing third person. You're writing as if someone else is talking on your behalf. Don't let someone else talk on your behalf. You speak very clearly to your target audience. It is Stacy talking to me. That is the richest way to build a LinkedIn profile. Um, and uh, by the way, these ideas I'm sharing with you, a couple of things. Listen to these words I'm going to use. I'm Teddy. I'm full of ideas. Use them as you see fit. 
you may not agree with everything I say, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. Additionally, don't go busting out like a bull in a china closet and make these changes overnight. Think about them a little bit. Think about the words you're using. Think about your target audience. Think about how you should say it and then go work on it. Don't You don't need to do this all in one setting because I promise you, if you do, it will not work. So, but yeah, Stacy, talk to me directly. Don't let someone else talk to me on your behalf. So, um, cool. Anybody else? Anybody else want to ask me any question? Have me bring up their profile and play with it. I'm happy to help any of you with anything that you want to ask me or just drop a question in chat and ask me a question there. Go back to my profile while I'm waiting for you others to show up. How often, uh, Pamela, hey, Pamela, show up next week after next. Uh, I'll answer your question, but please show, uh, we're doing, is it every Thursday for the three weeks, Karen, is that right? Yes, we have the 16th and the 23rd. Yeah, show up on the 16th and the 23rd. I can promise you, if this is interesting to you, hang tight for the next two weeks. I got even more that will knock your freaking socks off. Can I say that, Karen? <laughs> Pamela, uh, how often should you post on LinkedIn? No more than once a day. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. So um, let's say uh, Joy Land. I hope I'm pronouncing this lady's name right. Hey, I got a trick for you, Jorlin. I I hope you did. Oh my God, she said in uppercase. Uh, um, I'm, I'm glad I did that. Hey, Jorlin, look at this. On my LinkedIn profile, look right here. See the little icon? That's my 10-second uh, introduction to Teddy. So you can add that. I think you can only do it on mobile. It's been a while since I've done it because I only do it once. But on your mobile device, you can record that little sound bite so people can hear the pronunciation of your name. Because I can guarantee you that you know, it, I, I, that I, today is one of my better days of pronouncing people's names properly. So, attorney and notary republic, drop this. I already know who you work for. It's right there. It's right there. Two hundred twenty characters. Tell me what you do as a as an attorney and notary republic. Tell me who you really want to serve. What kind of work you want to do? Criminal defense, estate planning, business law, notary. This you're using the uh, uh, services page, um, you know, um, criminal defense. So you it looks like you're hitting pretty much everything there. Wait a minute, where's divorce? You don't have divorce attorney in there. And that the, that's the same thing as criminal defense in my wife's eyes. I'm joking. Um, but tell me what you do. Tell me how you serve and keep growing your network. Show up next week, Jarlene. We're going to have that, that conversation next week. And, uh, you know, tell me, um, tell me what you do. You've been working for, in your business for three years. You've got a company page, okay? And uh, wait a minute, why does it show you as an employee of your own company page? This is a company page. Hmm. You're right there. Don't know why you don't show up. It usually would show one. Oh, uh, that's, uh, there's been a little hiccup going on LinkedIn, but if I, if you don't have a company page, tell, do something with it. Give me something, uh, share some content, show up in a couple of weeks. We'll talk about this a little bit more, but, um, you know, tell me what you do in your job. Tell me what you did in these previous jobs and how you grew, how you developed, how you became the professional attorney that you are today. Um, you know, really can, you got a lot of different and experiences here that you could talk about. You don't need to do every one of them, but use some of them to tell more of the story about how you became who you are today. And then, um, so I'm looking for anything else, licenses or cert certifications. Maybe there's other certs that you have. You got 16 skills. You could probably have more. Good, you're taking courses. Um, so yeah, tell me more about what you do. Oh, you don't have an about section. There's no about section. Remember, that's the section that shows up right here above experience where you tell you tell the stories. So um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, Vanessa says, do you post on your company page or share to your personal? No, absolutely not. One second. Vanessa, what you do 
is you post content yourself. Where's my content? You post your own content. And look, I can have, you know, posts, which are original posts. I can write articles. These are comments I've made, videos I've done. You can see I have events, documents, reactions. Um, but you post your own content. And then on your company page, what you'll do on your company page, now listen to this. This is critical. Let me go view as a member. Um, oh, I can stay it as an admin. But you post content as the uh, on the page for the business. This is not from my personal profile. But then when you post on the page for your business, you switch to be a member. And then you come down here to post. And listen to these words. You do not hit the like button. You do not hit the repost button. Instead, you hit the comment button. If you want to engage, if you want to get your company content seen by more people, then comment on it. Maybe tag somebody that you know that it's relevant to uh, and get more people to come touch this content. That's how you use company page content. You do not repost it. Because when you repost it, especially if you repost with your thoughts, it creates two pieces of content that are fighting for the LinkedIn newsfeed. So don't do that. Comment on it. Maybe send it to someone and get their opinion of it and share it. Is the about section of my business profile the same as the about section of my personal profile as the owner of the business? No, Pamela. No. Let me go back to Pamela where she's at. Oh, uh, do, you, do you have a company page, Pamela? It appears that you're not connected to it. Um, not yet. Okay, so I'll stop looking for it. So no, your about section is about Pamela and what Pamela does specifically to serve her target audience. Your about section on your company page is where you tell the viewer of your company page what your company is all about and how your company, listen to these words, serves its clients. Please do not do what a bunch of old, nearly dead people do, and I'm being stupid with my analogies here, and have you copy and paste your website about section that says Uncle Henry started this company, great Uncle Henry started this company in circa 1910, and then Uncle Ralph took it over and on and on and on. No one wants to hear about that. The only people who are interested in hearing about the history of your company is your, comp your employees and Uncle Ralph and great Uncle Henry. What your client wants to hear is how you solve their problems. I, I may be an odd man out here, but I'm pretty blunt about this. No one cares, for the most part, about the history of your company. They care about what you can do to serve them. Um, hey, Karen, we didn't lose anybody when I said that, so I didn't tick anybody off. <laughs> so... Um, Anybody, anybody else, what other questions do you have? I have plenty of time to help you with any other questions. Um, drop them in chat. Link to the com. I'll uh, see Nicole. Oh, uh, let me bring up Nicole's profile. <clears throat> I rarely use LinkedIn, but want to use it more. I had several businesses in different industries, safety training, farmers market, and a farm. You had or you have? Those are two different words. I don't know. Well, I hate why I can't copy that. Let me try it again. You have. That's fine. So this is an interesting conversation I get into often where I have multiple uh, businesses. And, and this, there's nothing wrong with having multiple businesses and even referencing them on LinkedIn. My primary business <clears throat> is I'm a LinkedIn strategist, trainer, and coach. But if you look at what else I do, I am also, uh, I'm a Google Workspace. I teach Google Workspace. I also do webinar design for individuals and companies who want webinars created for them uh, or they want video content. I'm also a leadership coach, a career transition coach. These are all the things that I do. Um, and so all of those are diverse uh, may be related in some way or another, but they are still diverse. But if you look, I lead with this. 
I teach LinkedIn as a business tool. I lead with this. The rest of it's in there, but I lead with what's most important. So for you, Nicole, if you're going to share that you have other businesses, which you have, I see them. What you want to do is lead with the business that is the most relevant to your LinkedIn network or that you can get value from LinkedIn for. <clears throat> and then the, the rest of it, you may not, this is a business, I'm assuming a business to consumer, uh, maybe a business to business there, maybe business to consumer there. Um, uh, this might be business to business, I'm not sure, but lead with the thing that is the most relevant. You can, anything that has the word present, you can shuffle these around and put these in any order you want to put them. Put them in the order that's most relevant to your use of LinkedIn. And then talk about each of them in different pieces of content at, at the level that they are relevant uh, and, and the, to the level that you think you'll get value out of talking about them on LinkedIn. And if you don't think being a farm owner is important on LinkedIn, then don't spend a lot of time on that. Spend time talking about the other content, the other conversations that are more relevant. Um, oh, cool. Uh, Pamela said a global training company reached out to her on LinkedIn and now do training for them as a freelance trainer. Cool. Um, good stuff, Pamela. I, I mean, again, if your profile is built right, um, you'll get found for the words that, uh, that, that are on your LinkedIn profile. So uh, I'm a, I have in here that I'm a leadership coach and I got found because I'm a leadership coach. I got found because I'm a DDI certified and I got a huge contract back in 2017 and 18 because of that. They found me. And that's my point about building a professional LinkedIn profile. You want to build it so that you are found. And the more you focus on your target audience, and the more you focus on using the right words, the more you'll get found. So, Nicole, um, I'm a girl. I'm a girl dad. Can I put the girl hashtag girl dad? I got four daughters. You're you're vetting yourself, serial entrepreneur. Um, I, CP, I don't know what that is. CPR to go. I, I don't know what that is. Uh, looks like you're 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 stating your business names here. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I got that all here and I got that all down through here. Tell me what you do. Tell me how you create value. Tell me how you serve uh, your target audience. That's probably the most important thing. And Nicole, again, uh, the same thing I said earlier for someone else, you're using creator mode. I really wouldn't encourage you to use creator mode. You want to connect. You want to you build your network. Uh, unless you want to start pumping out content uh, and you're not, uh, you've got comments, post in a year, a year, you haven't posted anything in a year. Um, you, uh, and maybe you haven't been using it. That's okay. Maybe you're just getting back into it. Um, so I would not use creator mode unless you are serious about creating new content. And again, you don't have, uh, events, you don't have articles, you don't have newsletters. And so uh, go switch. I would encourage you to turn off creator mode. And the way, way you do that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads around the world, is it's right here under resources on your LinkedIn profile. I can't see your resources. It's right there, creator mode. And you turn it on or turn it off. So again, I encourage you not to turn it on until you get into the thousands of connections and until you decide you're going to be creating content on a very, very consistent basis. So um, anybody else, any other questions? While I'm waiting for any other questions, I'll share this with you. Uh, here's your analytics, which by the way, plan on that moving. It's right there today, but it is definitely going to move. And uh, you could... Uh, so you want to pay attention to that. You don't want to get all bent out of shape and excited about it, but you want to pay attention. Are my views growing? Am I showing up in more searches? Um, am I is my content getting more eyeball? These are these are two two or three somewhat important analytics, but don't get all excited about them 
And don't compare yourself to someone else. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. That's the most important thing. Um, something else to pay attention to, and that is, uh, uh, did I show this to you? How to add new sections. Um, if you if you don't have a section on your profile yet, it's right here, add profile section. And it used to be when I scroll up, there it is, it's all the way over here now, that I add a profile section, it brings up core. These are the four core recommended. These are the four recommended. And then additional one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are nine additional. So you'll find all the different sections under here. And recommended has featured. Featured's pretty cool. If you got some really, you know, graphically rich content uh, on YouTube and Google Docs uh, and, you know, on your website, uh, it could be a great place to put content for people to find it. And so they can find what you hope that they also agree is important information. Um, how do we know what the right, how do we know what the right words are to get noticed? Peggy, it's a journey. <clears throat> um, you, you gotta, you gotta understand your client. One of the things that I recommend is go speak to your best clients, get three or four of them that you absolutely love. Do I have Peggy up here? Go find three or four of your best clients, Peggy, and ask them. You got 2,600 connections. I'm sure you're connected to some good clients. And get in a conversation with them and tell them that, hey, I'm working on updating my LinkedIn profile. I want to make sure it speaks well about who I am and what I do, important to my clients. Could you help me out? What are some words that you think about? Not validation words, action words, tactical words, service words. What are some words that you think about when you think of me? And get the, I think service words might be the best way to do that. You know, when, when I'm helping you, what am I helping you solve? What am I helping you create? So start there, Peggy, especially if you got some good connections with, with your clients. So, and then a few more minutes, Pamela, will we dive into targeting in future training, defining our target audience? No, Pamela, I mean, I've hit on it. Uh, I'll, I'll speak about it a little bit more because actually we probably will. Next week, we will talk a little bit more about targeted audience in the context of building your network. So we will talk about that a little bit more next week. Uh, pa Pamela, tell me you'll be here next week, right? Please. I'm, I'm good at that upsell, ain't I, Karen? Yes. <laughs> so um, one sec. Oh, I really encourage you. I'll wrap it up with this. Don't rush through this. You know, uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. You really want to think through, you know, who am I? 220 characters. What are the keywords that are important? Who's my target audience? And once you have a good handle on, you know, what are your keywords and what are your target audience? Then you can start building your uh, your uh, headline. Then you can go with a piece of paper and a pencil or Word or Google Docs, not on, not on LinkedIn. Do not write this content in LinkedIn. Instead, write it in Word or Google Docs or a piece of paper and pencil and get it written first. Then, except for paper and pencil, once you've written it, edited it, revised it, grammar checked it, grammar checked it, spell checked it again, 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 then, and you feel really, really good about it. You feel real good about it because it's telling the stories that your target audience can uh, uh, understand and relate to. Then you can copy and paste it into LinkedIn. It's really important to do that. Uh, too many people go start banging on the keyboard on LinkedIn and... And, and they get it in there and they don't, they don't have goosebumps. They don't feel good about it. And I want you to feel good about it because then you know you did it right. Any other thoughts, questions, ideas? Carla, I'm going to put it on a YouTube video. It'll be unlisted, but it will be there. I will send the video link to Karen and Karen will send that out to you, including this simple slide deck that I put together. Yes, ma'am. Why? Because we can. Karen, did I miss anything, boss? 
No, you did a great job as always. Thank hey, you. Hey, hey, Karen, my boss ball say here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. And as um, Teddy said, we do have two more sessions and, uh, next week on the 16th and then the following week on the 23rd. So next week, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn for business engagement. And then on the 23rd, we'll talk about more about networking and using your LinkedIn for that. So pretty good stuff. Um, so I will be sending you, we're having trouble with our survey uh, monkey right now. So um, look for an email for me on Monday, hopefully, <clears throat> that where I will send you the survey as well as the slide presentation and the recording. So again, thanks. And we hope to see you uh, join us next week.